There are about 800,000 Minnesota families living in a situation where you have to choose between heat for your home and other competing basic necessities such as food and clothing. So when the weather turns colder, families begin to have to make some very challenging choices. Are they going to set the thermostat at 50 or 55? Can they afford 65 this year? There's a very painful opportunity cost with choosing how they're going to heat their home because it always comes at the expense of something else. It's the hardest feeling I think in the world, um, knowing that knowing that your kids are, are cold, knowing that they're not in a safe home, knowing that you could do better for them and that you're trying, you know. There's some people that don't have the boots with the straps on it. And um, uh, if you're just going to walk away from that, um, what values are you living out of? Before it even started to get cold, we'd begin to panic. We'd begin to panic about how were we going to stay warm in the winter, and, and was our house going to make it through another winter, and was everybody going to be safe at the end of winter. The average temperature was about 46 degrees in the house. It was freezing almost all the time. We'd have to stay right next to a space heater, huddled together in the house to actually stay warm. She was having a tough time keeping her water unfrozen or you know, ensuring that her septic was functional or just paying the propane bill. Periodically they would come and take her propane tank and uh, basically you know, it was very challenging for her to keep the home healthy and warm. There's a lot of days I didn't feel like I was going to make it through because um, I still had to go to work and come home and make sure that everybody was okay and it was so cold. It was so cold nobody wanted to get out of bed. Nobody wanted to get out from under the covers to even get dressed to go to school or go to work or get anything done at all. The state of Minnesota right now spends about $75 million every year paying low-income families heating bills. That's a very, very important service. But unfortunately, it's not offering a lasting solution to families' fuel poverty. I was inspired to do this work because the need was so obvious to me and the solution similarly seemed so apparent. Real started basically in my garage and in my basement. I was going to graduate school at the time and I was flat broke and qualified for energy assistance. And so I looked into the possibility of receiving solar heat as part of the energy assistance program and they basically said that was out of the question and not an option. And so we were motivated to see if we could make that a possibility. We're using a real simple technology. We're using a flat box with a sheet of glass on it and it's, um, it's a little bit darker on the inside and the sun is shining in there and it, it's heating it up. And what we're doing is we're just taking that, that simple idea and putting a fan onto it and blowing that hot air to other areas of the home. We're tapping into that sun energy and, and just making it affordable. None of us, quite frankly, had experience with business development or manufacturing or engineering or any of these things and a lot of these pieces of the puzzle were assembled as a result of our work with the Initiative Foundation. We've basically taken the technology and given it a high-tech twist. So with the help of uh, our engineers, one of whom was a Vista, um, we've actually developed a very high-tech version of this very simple technology and so we wanted to be able to manufacture our own product for our own program so we could reduce our cost and serve more families. What I applied for initially was just a panel, just anything to help out at all, anything to reduce my cost that I was paying for heat, anything at all to help. And initially he was going to give me just two solar panels. Tiffany was living in a home where there were gaping holes in the floor and the walls were so weak that they could almost be pushed down by her kids. Um, the insulation was minimal and non-existent in places. We acquired a mobile home for the collector R&D. Well, after we were through, we thought that it would be best to find a good use for this home. And then out of the blue, he called me and said, we actually have an entire house with nine solar panels on it. Do you want it? And I thought, he was kidding at first. I thought, 
get out of here. Somebody's gonna give me a house with solar panels on it. That doesn't happen. And it meant so much that I couldn't fathom it for a couple of days at least when we moved in, you know, like, this is our house. This is a nice house. This has got nice thick walls. It's got solar panels on the side. This is gonna change everything. I have a lot less stress in my life right now because knowing that my children are coming home to a warm, safe, sound home. A lot of people seem to have, unfortunately, uh, disdain for families living in, in poverty. And you know, we think that poverty is much less of a scarlet letter and more of a, a badge of courage. Minnesota, actually, is the only state in the nation right now to use public funds to finance the inclusion of renewable heat into the weatherization and energy assistance program. We've got a great model to, to make a, a big difference in people's lives and a big difference in the way that, the, that our corner of the world and maybe the world operates. There's some magic here. There's some real magic here. For working families trying to rise up from poverty, enduring the bitter cold of a Minnesota winter can be devastating. Surviving night after frigid night takes its toll on school, work, health, and finances, setting them behind before they ever have a chance to get ahead. With grants and support from the Initiative Foundation, Vista, and others, the Rural Renewable Energy Alliance applied common sense and uncommon caring to engineer a home solar collector that reduces heating expenses by up to 30 percent, conserving energy and public assistance needs for more than 60 low-income families. While other renewable energy investors measure profit margins, Real measures its success by transforming lives and the environment, even after many said their goals were simply impossible to achieve. For their selflessness, perseverance, and proof that renewable energy holds the promise of hope for all families, the Initiative Foundation and Minnesota Power are proud to honor the Rural Renewable Energy Alliance of Pine River, Minnesota as the 2009 Outstanding Green Venture. Please welcome them to the stage to accept the award.